um, everything a man says? No, it's, it's God's word alone. But we want to learn not to go beyond what's written in God's word and we interact in a community, us, as one community. We, we interact with our larger community that we're in, faith, in the church in America, in the world, and in church history. Why would we do that? Because we don't think we're the end all of it all, right? Others have gone before us. Paul said, commit to faithful men who will be able to what? Teach others also. Well, there's been other faithful men who've taught. Should we not read them? Should we not hear from them? That would be pretty proud to say, no, it all ends, it all ends with me and, it's, and my interpretation of the scripture is the end all. Now, we're living stones. There's one stone, Christ. We're living stones. We're being built up. So as little stones being built up together, we're interacting with each other. We're reading. We're talking. We're, we're learning. Because there's other faithful men that have gone before us, right? They've interacted with these things. So this, this humility, um, the anointing from the Spirit, the, the help that God gives, all these things are part of this hermeneutic that helps us to embrace God's Word and derive the meaning of the Scripture for what it is written. So that's why we start with the study of of God's word, okay. Uh, let me overview. I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on that in a minute. Let me let me finish this. Any questions on what I just said? We all agree. Any questions? Tracking with that. Um, so we start with the word of God. Then we go to the doctrine of God. So who is God, right? And then that's theology proper. Then we go to the doctrine of man, anthropology. What do you believe about man? So what do you believe about the Bible? God and man. And that's, that's pretty foundational to your worldview, right? Um, the sinful nature of man. Man made in the image of God. Male and female. All that stuff. That's, that's, and this, the doctrine of God, doctrine of man, is on attack today. Human sexuality. That's all under the doctrine of man, right? So what does the Bible teach about male and female? Very important, right? Wouldn't it be good that when you're in a discussion with someone, you've already studied this out? You, had a, you did a systematic study of the doctrine of man so that when you're called upon, you don't have to go back and, well, let me, let, me take, let me take 10 hours and study through this. No, you've studied through it, right? See, that's, that's being prepared. That's being prepared so that, you can have, so that we can be prepared with excellence. Now, it's going to take work, but you have to have the faith to believe that God is calling you to prepare so that you can be a more sharper tool, a more diligent tool in the hands of God. And only you can do that. As I guarantee, none of you have time for this. You just don't. Right? There's always something else to do, especially with all the gadgets and stuff. <clears throat> you know, reading. There's, there's readers or leaders, still. Still. You look at anyone <coughs> culturally who's leading. And I... And I I watch some. I watch videos, and I find different videos interesting and different cross sections that I could never talk to those people, right? And they'll say they'll, they'll, there's an amazing similarity. They all say we had to unlearn our education and relearn our education, right? Learning, and we all had to read. There's a place for videos. There's a place for lecture, and there's a place there's a place for reading. Yes. Sure. Read a quote by Spurgeon. Give yourself under reading. The man who never reads will never be read. He who never quotes will never be quoted. Hmm. He who never uses the thoughts of other men's brains proves he has no brains of his own. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Rudy. Bring that over here. But say it in the microphone. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Somebody else read it. No, you read it. Get yourself up here and read it. That's a great quote. You want to read it? No, you read it. All right. I'll read it. Give yourself unto reading. The man who never reads will never be read. He who never quotes will never be quoted. He who never uses the thoughts of other men's brains proves he has no brains of his own. Charles Haddon Spurgeon. So readers, readers are leaders. Yeah, re readers are leaders. It, it's how it is. And so, I mean, unless you're, unless you're mainly an auditory learner, which there are some, I get that. There's something to, and again, I'm not discouraging any form of learning. I like auditory learning. I thrive in auditory learning. 
I also, there's also a time to sit down and read. And, and theology is hard reading. Christopher on the way over here was saying, Dad, you know, because we're talking about what, what's the expectation for you, for my kids. He's like, you know, Dad, when you're reading, like, when you're reading a fiction book, your mind can just float and you just kind of float through it. Reading theology is not like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a discipline. Yeah. So, doctor, God, man, doctrine of Christ and the Holy Spirit. Uh, doctrine of salvation, soteriology. What is salvation? Who is Christ? Who is the Holy Spirit? Um, the doctrine of the church. And eschatology, the doctrine of last things. So those, those are in order and in church history. So the book we're going to use to help us understand church history is the Historic Theology by Allison. So this book helps. This, it takes a, a systematic overview through an introduction to Christian doctrine as it relates to the church. So this is looking at doctrine through church history. Okay, so, so you have your, your book list. These are the main books. I'm going to give out, I can give other books. I'll give side readings and things, but these are the main books. Um, the, the kind of, if you would, the, I hate to say the spine, because, <laughs> uh, but this is the, this is kind of the main, uh, as we follow scripture, this is the, we're going to follow Grudem's theology, and Grudem's theology, I pick Grudem's theology because it is systematic, generally reformed, it's not perfect, right? But it is also very readable. It's very accessible to everybody. So, in other words, I'd rather have you read this and get it than read maybe Strong or uh, Hodge or some other people that you're just not probably going to read. So, <laughs> what's that? Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So, Grudem. Grudem's a good one. Now, now there's another one that I, I do work from, and that's Robert Raymond. Again, he, he's a little. He's gonna be a little more advanced. A new systematic of the Christian faith. So he's to complement Grudem, right? So if you want to get him, he's a good one to have. Again, it would really, really help. I mean, if you're going to do this class, reading Grudem is just, I think you've got to read Grudem. And you don't, you don't have to read it all at once. You read a chapter, right? It just helps you familiarize yourself. And again, I, I remember the first time I read theology, it was, it was um, Charles Ryrie, Basic Theology. I was blown away. I was like, oh, this is wonderful. All these questions and all these answers. And I, and I would take it and I, and, and I look up and I would, I would just, I, I circle the reference and I look up the reference and I'd read what it said and I, and I was learning the Bible that way. So you learn, to, you learn to think theologically by studying theology. You can, you'll never take all scripture for all life unless you learn to think theologically. What does the text say? What does it mean in this context? How does that relate to the issues of my day? What questions does it answer today? That's what theology helps us do. It goes from the world of the text to help us in our, in our current questions that we ask about who is God and all these things. So enjoy this study. So take it and, 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 and invest in it. Study the, the cross-references, right? Scripture with Scripture. So this is a good one. Another good one uh, that I will refer to as a, as a help is John Frame, Systematic Theology and Introduction to Christian Belief. Right? Very helpful book. And those are, those are systematic theologies. There's a lot of good systematic theologies, but those are just a couple. Um, we have the uh, 1689 London Baptist Confession, right? Yeah. Actually, yeah, but this is, this is, this is like deep theology. <laughs> you know, you read a page, and you're reading it a couple times. You're reading, yeah. This is, this is not, it's simple, but it's, it's deep. And there's a lot of cross-references there, right? So, and everybody should have one. We hand those out. Um, Luther's Bondage of the Will, you can get that online. You can, another good book, which I think everybody should have, Recovering Biblical Manhood and Womanhood, A Response to Evangelical Feminism. Very good book. Just, th this is a book, it's a, it's a, uh, a number of articles. It was edited by Grudem. 
and Piper. It's full of different articles that, that deal with relevant subjects even today. Um, so that's a very, very helpful book. And we'll be reading some of that in our study on anthropology. So let's see what else. These are, these are just books that, all, as we go through the seven different sections, you know, I'll introduce different resources for each of the sections, okay? So if you don't have Knowing God by J.I. Packer, why don't you have it? I mean, it's just everybody needs to read J.I. Packer at least, you know, every, every couple of years. It's just, it's just really good. It's Who is God, right? Knowing God by G.I. Packer. So, great book. Uh, Frame wrote this book, The Doctrine of God. That's a helpful book. And then you have uh, uh, this one. You can get them online. And I think we should, I, I, I didn't require this last time. But um, this is the, uh, not what my hand's done. It doesn't matter. This is by the Trinity Foundation. It put them together. But it's the everlasting righteousness and justification by faith alone. So it's by uh, Horatius Bonar wrote, uh, wrote uh, The Everlasting Righteousness and Justification by Faith Alone by Charles Hodge. Again, I'll give these out again. You can get these online and read them for free. Right? You don't have to buy this book. I like this book, but you don't have to buy this book. This is not what my hands have done from the uh, Trinity Foundation. But those articles, The Everlasting Righteousness by Horatius uh, Bonar, is, uh, you can get that online. I th I'm pretty sure you can download it. And some of those won't be needed for a while. Right. Yeah, this is like for the two years. <laughs> right. And, and I, what I, I, on your list, I put the, the, the kind of the main books. Now, Daniel, and I didn't write Daniel Estes because uh, I don't have the updated version. So let's, okay, so any questions on that overview? What is the main book you need to read? The Bible. Study God's Word. What book are we, are we going to help us to kind of work us through systematic theology? Grudem. Grudem. Right. Um, Why are we going to use Grudem? Easy. Right. It's easy. And I don't have the time to do that. Right? I'm not writing a systematic theology. It takes me forever. And I wouldn't do a very good job at it either. You know what I mean? So we, we do submit to other men not as our final authority of Scripture, but because other men, and, and he's on the shoulders of other men, right? He didn't originate that, he, right? It's a, it's a process. It's, but we're in the context of church history here. So that's why we use that as, as, a, as, a, as a helpful guide. So, you know, it's a little different than when we focus on biblical theology and the Old Testament and New Testament survey. We had our Bible, and then we had our, some background books. And that's what we did. Now, to do a systematic study of all these things, thankfully, in the English-speaking world, we have men that have done this for us, right? So that we can look at the references and cross-reference and, and help us put the Bible together and address the issues of our day. That's why we, we, don't, we don't depend on them, but we use these tools. William? It's also nice that it, and helpful that uh, Allison's book was written as a companion. Yes. Yes. Very helpful. So the study of church history, very helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. Yes? How much does uh, Grudem's book cost? Who did, Phil, you just bought it. Which one? Five. Gr I five. Is this systematic theology? Well, I mean, this is, I mean, it, yeah, you, I would search the internet. 32, 32 bucks on Amazon. You don't have to buy a new one, though. Yeah, you can buy a new one. Buy a used one. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Any other questions?